Hey, what's up Linda users, I'm Jonathan and in today's video I want to talk about HDRI creation. For a personal project I needed environmental information from a place I wasn't present at due to COVID regulations, so I needed a solution. After some searching I found the option to create 360 degree JPEG images with the Google Street View app that my friend who was at the location could use. As shown on the Instagram page from Blender Daily, you only get reflections from such an image. But integrating 3D objects into videos also heavily relies on lighting info. And because I don't want to manually place lights in Blender to mimic the lighting in low dynamic range images, I searched and luckily also found a way to convert low dynamic range images into high dynamic ones. All of this is done by using AI. This of course means that the result won't be perfect, but just an approximation. Using this technique, however, we can extract more information from our JPEG image. So let's set everything up. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. To convert our image into an HDR one, we of course first need to create our photosphere. Again, you can easily do this with Google Street View. With the app open, you can select Photosphere and follow the on-screen instructions. After the app has finished processing it, the image will be saved onto your phone. You do not have to publish it. The next step is of course to convert it into an HDRI. We'll do this by using this GitHub repository. All of this here is pre-written for us and we can just use it, but we have to first configure our Python environment. So let's start by downloading this repository. You can either do this with the download the button or using git clone it into any of your folders. And I will do this with git. So I will copy this link with this button right here, choose a folder I want to have it cloned in and in the navigation bar right here type in cmd, git clone and copy the link in here. Of course you will have to have git installed onto your system, but this is a pretty straightforward process. Once everything is downloaded we can close our cmd and enter our folder. You can see this is our folder structure and everything worked correctly. The next step is to download the pre-trained weights and you can do this with the link right here. It will lead you to a Google Drive and once you click download, it should download onto your PC. With this folder downloaded, we can open it and copy all folders into our main repository. Great! To actually run our code, we need Python installed. You can either configure the Python installation on your system or, using Anaconda, create a new Python environment. I will be using Anaconda because I like to have different Python environments for different projects. And you can download Anaconda right here. The website is in the video description. And once Anaconda is installed, we can again type in cmd and type in conda. And you can see that the command is recognized so it is usable. Let's create a new environment and name it accordingly, which for me is single HDR. And for me it worked with the Python version 3.6. So once it has loaded to this stage, we can just press enter and the environment is ready to use. To use it, we have to activate it. So type in conda activate and then the name. And you can now see that we have this environment activated. Every module we install will be installed to this environment. This way, if anything goes wrong, we can just delete this environment and create a new one and our Windows installation won't be influenced. Okay, to run this code, we can check on the GitHub page what we have to install and it only tells us TensorFlow and it has been tested with TensorFlow 1.10. So let's install this version. You can now either choose to install it for CPU or GPU. GPU is of course faster, but it is a lot harder to set up especially because you have to change your CUDA version. I personally didn't got it to run, because after a while I wasn't able to figure out what was causing the issues I had. So I will install TensorFlow for CPU, and for this just type in pip install tensorflow equals equals 1.10.0. When you first install TensorFlow it can take a while, so be aware of that. Next we can try to run the code. You can see that in the images folder we have a sample image, and we'll be using this for testing. So let's navigate over to the GitHub page and select this command right here. Just copy and paste it into your CMD. The way we have set up Python doesn't allow for Python 3 to be used, so let's only use Python. Next, press enter and you should be seeing this error, no module named tensor layer. 
I found that the Tensorlayer version 1.11.1 works fine with all the requirements for the used TensorFlow version. So let's install this one. Once this is installed, we can navigate to our previous command with arrow up and again hit enter. And you can now see that it gives us the error no module named CV2 and we can easily fix it by installing opencv-python. Okay, great. Now we should be able to run our code and you can see that it now is converting the image into an HDR one. Okay, it has finished. And if we check the output HDR folder, you can see that an HDR has been output. And when comparing these two images, you can really see the effect that this AI had on the image. This is the before and this is the after. You can see that we get a lot more information. And even if we turn down the exposure, light information has been generated. Of course, it is not perfect, but it really helps in the 3D workflow. I think we are ready to finally convert our own image into an HDR one. But first we need to downscale this image because it is a lot bigger than we need it to be at 10K times 5K. So I will just downscale it to 2K because this is all I need. And once you have your downscaled version ready, we can copy it into the images folder. We do not need the previous image because this was just for testing purposes. And we also do not need the previous HDRI output. Awesome, we can now again run the code and it should give us an according output for our photosphere. Okay, the image has been converted. And if we take a look at it, you can see that this is the before image and this is the after. And you can now see that we have light information. If I turn down the exposure slider, you can see that the light that should be brightest stays bright. In contrast to that, if we turn down the exposure in the before version, everything goes dark evenly. The only thing that is left to do now is to import it into Blender and we can even compare it to the low dynamic range version. So back in this file, you can see that if I plug in the new HDR version, we now have correct light information. It generally got a lot darker but we can easily compensate for this by adjusting the background strength. And one final render shows us how the HDR version affects our scene. And you can see that with the JPEG version, we have a much less believable result. The HDR version gives us more depth in the light. It may not be recognizable over YouTube with the compression, but it really is in person. Of course, this is all an approximation. So going out and capturing a real HDR image will be a lot better. But if you only have a low dynamic range image from your phone, this might be a good way to fake lighting. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can convert a low dynamic range image into a high dynamic one. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, you can of course ask me in the comments. And with that said, we will see each other in the next video next Saturday. <laughs>